And why is that the nice doll? He's When you go into a house where little babies are growing up and on the wall is a picture of Jesus and God and all the angels and none of them look like any of them and the little babies are saying you say to the little baby who is that on the wall? They say oh that's God that's who? That's God which one? The one with the blue eyes and the blonde hair well, if that's God, who are you? And what is your relationship to Him? And then my intelligent friends come along and say, Oh, well, that has nothing to do with it. We all understand that was just a reproduction that was done by Raphael or by Michael and John. And that really not like, that is not really, listen, this is just a symbolic portrayal of the deity. And it has nothing to do with the valid representation of what the deity is. You convince your three-year-old of that lie. You convince your three-year-old that you are pointing to this thing and calling it God. And tell that child that it's not what you represented it as being. That child grows up with the concept that God is a Caucasian. And if God is a Caucasian in a world such as this, in a world such as this, in a world that has been set up on the dialectical opposition between black and white, then the child automatically understands that if this is God represented by white, then I must be the opposite represented by black. At least the child can understand that. Listen. And then you wonder, why your three-year-old talks about how ugly she is, as beautiful as she is. You wonder why they start telling you at five, Mom, I want my hair straightened. You wonder why they begin to start coming into your room like Toxie with white flour or powder, baby powder, all over their faces, talking about, Mama, isn't this color pretty? Because you have worked to build insanity into the minds of your own children. The human being is the most destructive disease in the society. And I don't mean just disliking blacks and disliking women. I think the loss of respect for the human consciousness, the human moral capability, the human ethical capability, the human philosophical and creativity capability, the loss of respect that makes us then turn our children into automatons and robots and let them follow Nintendo killer games and teaches them that that's the way to become intelligent and alert, to turn them into pro 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 processes that do nothing but repeat and rotely memorize what someone else is telling you to do. And then make them go eat poison that kills themselves. Make them think that Mickey D's is better than mama's own cooking. To make them believe that the fatter they are, the healthier they are. To make them believe that somehow they can create reality simply by sitting in front of a television set and then begin to feed young children from day one with a diet of utter violence, vehement, savagery, brutality, and sexual perversion unheard of on the planet before. And to feed that to young babies and then wonder why babies are going out and killing adults. Because you teach them to do it, fool. That's why they're doing it. Because that's the law. We should be something. Do you realize that each one of you 
pursuing a degree, got a job, got a degree, finished high school, even finished grade school, that you are still living after 21 years of being what America intended you to become. Don't you realize that that's a miracle? Do you understand that there is not one psychological theory to tell how you could come out of a project community where out of a family that had never gone to college, where books were not read, where there was no kind of cognitive stimulation early private going into the learning situation where you were not going to talk certain analytical skills based upon the use of Mattel toys flying over your crib and being able to go to an early program that gave you the pre-learning capability to be able to read and master certain fundamental techniques? Do you understand that there is no psychological explanation at all to explain what you're doing here? You are a living miracle. There is no psychological explanation for why you are here. Now look, look, please. That's special. You understand? Now look, we know that the Richmond jail is full of black folks, no doubt. Virginia prison system, black folks everywhere. Crack dealers around this neighborhood, black folks. They there, there's no doubt about it. We got crack dealers, we got drugs, we got alcoholics, we got bombs sleeping in this room. We got them all. You're right, they're there. It's young boys falling out of school, third grade. We have people beating up their families. We got all that. But why does this count? So do white people. And what's more, what's their damn excuse? They lived in a society that constantly told them, you are worthwhile, you're valuable, you're capable of leadership, you deserve to be in the leadership of the world. They lived in a society that constantly told them positive messages about their possibility. You had to overcome every obstacle out there, and you got a few of those too. So, so what? That's not easy to explain. To explain why young brothers give up early, trying to move ahead in a system that shows nothing positive for their possibilities. To understand why young girls who are told that they are too fat, too black, too kick your head, nose is too big to be beautiful, to begin to believe that their intelligence is not worth anything because they don't look like Madonna, to begin to believe in a society like this that somehow, unless they look like the Virgin Mary, there is no spiritual pri privileges in them. When I say the Virgin Mary, I'm talking about the Rembrandt form, the Raphael form, the Ma Michelangelo form. I ain't talking about the real form. I'm talking about those forms. To believe that somehow there is no dignity in you unless you look like someone other than yourself. Doesn't it make sense that you try to go find something to make you feel good and love may be the only way there? Doesn't it make sense that some brothers will feel that somehow their only claim to power and effectiveness is being able to go from woman to woman, spread babies all over town, because that's the only way they can prove their manhood, because they can't find it anywhere else? That's accept, that's understandable. Don't you think that some brothers are going to be crazy enough to believe that they can walk around with a white woman, no matter how she looks, that they somehow have gone into power just to be with somebody else? Listen, listen, listen. Look. Jungle fever is a predictable condition. Create an environment like this, jungle fever epidemics break out. People catch it, it happens. Now what we are suggesting is that that's predictable. What's not predictable is these brothers who still love them some black women no matter what. Listen, what's not understandable are these black women who keep on loving them some black Big nose, in your head, thick lip, black men. No matter what nobody says. What's phenomenal is how does one PhD come out of the Richmond projects and comes to VCU and kick butt all the way through? What's not understandable is how does one John Singleton come out of Compton and go put together a story about who we are that begins to make all the filmmakers hang up their books? What is it then that is able to take us and give us the creativity that nobody thought we should have and they did every doggone thing they could to prevent us from having it?